often think about the memories and things he ever said. Only peace and thoughts bestowed upon our faith. His angel reigns above us, so I know we're safe. We keep the family close to bow our heads and pray, but give it up to God and bow us. What we call it? Victory.
found me. You gave me your home and your love. I was on the blind until you showed me that life could be this good. I want all my friends to know about you. No matter what it takes, I'll never
give him a shout of praise if you know that he's been good to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, can we give it up for the band and for the choir real quick? Fantastic. God, we just pray right now in the midst of these moments, God, that you would speak to us. Everyone say speak. Help us to hear your word. Help us to listen to you. Help us to focus in on your presence. So grateful for what you're going to do tonight. Maybe even right now, what you're doing in the midst of minds right now, in the midst of souls right now. Shifting a perspective, changing futures right now. God, we're so grateful for you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Every teenager in the house said, yeah. Come on, if you're excited to be at the last rhythm night of the year, come on. Hey, if this is your first time at a rhythm night, we want to welcome you. Come on, let's give it up for all of our VIP. That's right. Uh, we hope you have an incredible time. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Tim Summers, and I have the privilege and honor to be able to be the youth pastor here at Elevation Church. And these nights are some of my favorite nights. You want to know why? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they really want to know why. Maybe they don't really care. These are some of my favorite nights because it's when you get a little glimpse into the future. Being able to see you guys worship and you know, some of you still kind of learning, still trying to figure it out. And uh, you know, God doesn't ask for perfection. He asks for progression. I really feel like, I feel like that's the state that we're in right now. We are progressing towards something absolutely incredible. And so being able to see your pretty little faces. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, you look good tonight. Oh, be careful. Be careful. Someone just got a date. Hey, it's the last rhythm night of the year. How many of you have enjoyed rhythm night this semester? Been incredible. I know we've got some brand new campuses in the house tonight that have not been. And uh, man, we pulled out all the stops, okay? Uh, we, we've got a special guest in the building tonight, and uh, I want you to give a big Elevation Youth welcome to an American designer, the founder and creator of Fear of God clothing line, a father, a husband. Come on, Elevation Youth, let's give it up for Mr. Jerry Lorenzo. Come on, show him some love. Tonight's gonna be a little different. You can find your way to your seat. Um, tonight, we get a few minutes just to be able to have the opportunity and ask uh, Jerry some questions. Anybody wanna ask Jerry some questions? <laughs> uh, we're gonna start it out light though. Okay, we're gonna start out light, but we're gonna get right into this. I only got so much time, so I gotta make the most of it. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. How you feeling right now? Uh, I'm nervous, but I'm, I'm happy to be here. You are nervous? <laughs> I think I'm the one that should be nervous. <laughs> um, all right, we'll start out uh, a little light. Uh, what would you say is the key to a good outfit? Oh, wow. Um, I would say um, effortlessness. Effortlessness, okay, yeah, is is key. Okay, yeah. One of one of my like um, one of the um, I guess boxes that I like to check in the morning when I'm walking out the door to to make sure I didn't look like I was trying too hard. <laughs> okay, it, can anyone relate? Sometimes I look like I'm trying too hard. <laughs> I can relate. That's good. Uh, all right, now you're an American designer. I believe you're a fashion icon. I don't know if you would say that about yourself. I believe you're a fashion icon, though. Okay, so you gotta tell me. You gotta tell me who maybe might be your fashion icon. Oh. 
Uh, I like um, I like people that like wear uniforms. So whether it was like Steve Jobs or Gandhi in a robe every day. <laughs> really? I, I I like people that find like their best look and understand that and 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 do that daily. Okay. I'm 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 in the pursuit of of doing that, trying to find that for myself. Yeah. I'm trying to get a Gandhi robe after this. <laughs> Y'all with me? <laughs> All right. Uh, tell us what you think about the new Jesus is King Kanye album. <laughs> I mean, if if. If you look at my, my, my iTunes most played, I mean, it's, it's number one right now. Okay. Um, I love the fact that I can play it in the, in the car with the kids. Um, and just personally, I'm, I'm really happy for him, just uh, friend to friend, that he can be at a place in his life where he can um, be unashamed with what he believes despite, um, <laughs> d d despite his past. Um, and we all have a past, and um, thank God that God, that he now sees himself the way that God sees him instead of seeing himself the way that the world um, looked upon him and judged him. And so I'm just really happy to see him uh, in this place now where he is um, uh, beginning this new dance with his creator. Um, and I think the best, we've, we've yet to see the best from him now that he's in tune with uh, the manufacturer that has given him all those gifts. I think we'll see the best version of those gifts now. Yeah. You, talk about, you talk about the dance with the creator. What does that look like for you and what you do? Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, I'm just constantly trying to be in a position to hear from him. And I think we live in a day and age where we're consistently flooded with information, uh, whether it's on the news, whether it's on our phone, social media. Um, and I think it's really important to find that quiet time um, where you can um, begin to have that personal relationship uh, with the one who made you. And you can um, begin to know and um, know when you're hearing his voice um, because now, again, as we're flooded with so much information, um, it's kind of hard to not only recognize his voice, but, but to recognize our own voice and our own point of view. Um, and so it's just really important to make sure that, you know, you're, you're feeding that spiritual side of your life so that you can hear from him and you can get in relationship with him and, and begin to have that, um, that dance and relationship with him. Yeah. You know, one, I think one of the hardest things for teenagers um, that they kind of struggle with, you know, in their adolescence is this idea of pursuing their calling or maybe even identifying their purpose, right? Um, I think what a lot of people may think is that... Um, uh, designing or fashion is your calling. And I know we got to talk a little bit earlier at lunch and you said, my calling is a lot higher than making a cool pair of jeans. You wanna elaborate a little bit on that? Um, yeah, 100%. I mean, I, th I think our purpose is to, um, to be in relationship with the one that, that made us, is our purpose. And I think that um, communicating and glorifying him through all that we touch is 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 living in purpose, and I think you can um, glorify him through everything that you touch, not necessarily just your job or your craft or your, whatever your your specialty may be. And um, I think it's important to, um, you know, my sister is a Soul Cycle instructor, and one of the things she says that I love is, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. And I, and as during this time of, you know, this wonderful time of age when, uh, at a, when you're a teenager and you get to try and do a lot of things, I think it's just important that you're, you're putting your all towards everything and you're um, uh, giving God the glory uh, while you're doing it. You know, I'm 42 years old. I didn't start a clothing line until I was 36. Um, and, you know, 
my whole life, I, I loved working retail. And I was, that was my part-time part job, was working retail while I was going to grad school and thinking I was going to uh, become the next Jerry Maguire and be a sports agent. Um, but the same way that I went about grad school and corporate America was the same way that, that I went about my part-time job working retail. And while I was working retail, I, you know, is, is where I gained my skills that I use now for fashion and understanding, you know, what people, how people want to feel when they, when they buy certain things or what people are, what are people looking for when they're, when they're shopping or getting dressed. And, um, you know, starting off in, in the stock room in Diesel in like the late 90s um, and, and really honoring that opportunity and fast forward to now and my, my part time has become my full time. And um, I just think it's, it's really important now that, you know, as you guys have your lives ahead of you to not, to not get so caught up in, in finding uh, what that craft is and thinking that that craft is tied to your purpose. You know, your purpose is to, is, is to live for the one who made us and to glorify him in all that you do. You know, and um, uh, sometimes you can look to someone that seems like they have success or worldly success and say, well, hey, Jerry, looks like you're on purpose because you have a brand that's doing well, but, you know, the way that God operates is beyond our understanding. And I also think it's a little scary to, you know, equate worldly success to what kingdom success may be. And so you never know how God is using you. You never know... Um, how and why he has you in the positions that he has you in. And so, again, it's just, it's just a constant dance and a constant relationship with him and constantly being open to, um, like Pastor Furtick said this morning, just being available. I think one of the reasons that I've been blessed is I've just been willing. You know, I've been, I've been willing to, um, to take him with me to places where maybe some people won't. And I think he's not looking for the best designer. He's not looking for the best uh, architect or whatever it is he may be. He's just looking for the person that's available. He's looking for the person that's, that's willing. So um, I, I just want to encourage you guys to, to, to be willing, to be available, um, and to uh, turn those phones off and to, like, just get into relationship with him and you know when when the intention of what you're doing and the spirit of what you're doing is in line with what he wants you to do you're also free of the weight of the outcome of what it is that you're doing because you know why you're doing it so um um yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little nervous I might be talking in circles it's, it's, oh, it's funny great. keep going <laughs> it's Funny being here, you know. I'm I'm used to tuning in and seeing this stage on on YouTube and selfishly getting fed. So I just hope that you know I'm able to to, to send some love back, you know, your your way. So yeah, you already getting something out of this so far? Most definitely. It's super helpful. You know, I think you talked a little bit about this. I think what can be really hard as a teenager is sharing the gospel, sharing your faith. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, your story, what I appreciate about you is that you don't necessarily have a mic and a stage to preach to people, right? But you're a business owner, you're a fashion icon. What are maybe some, some advice that you would give to some teenagers um, on how to share the gospel with their life when it's not on a literal stage? I think you just said it. I mean, I'm not the best at like preaching. I'm not the best at you know, pointing my finger and, and judging. I think the the best way to share your faith is how you live your life. You know, that's, you know, you can, you can give somebody some advice and you can, you know, encourage someone to go to church and read the Bible and do certain things that can help lead them down, going down the right way, but it's your life that's going to be the example. And, you know, I, I say that about my parents all the time is like, I don't remember what my parents told me. I just remembered what they showed me. And um, I think we can, 
if we as Christians can kind of get away from like trying to be so preachy and pointing the finger and just like love other people and love on each other and um, live a certain way, it, it'll, it'll make uh, being fishers of men a lot easier. Okay, let's, let's speak uh, a little on that when we talk about this idea of, I think as Christians, we can feel sometimes maybe the burden of trying to change someone. And um, what I love about you and what I appreciate about, appreciate about you is that you're extremely loud about your relationship with God, but you're not trying to force it on anyone else. And I, I think from your perspective, I would love to to know where you learned the intentionality behind that balance, or maybe some things that your parents um, taught you when it comes to that, that balance of knowing when am I sharing my faith and when am I pushing too far and trying to force it onto someone else? Oh, man. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, growing up, you know, black in, in America and, um, uh, just trying to make it as a as a black man, um, always knowing in the back of my head that I I felt like I had to be twice as good or I had to be um, um, I, I had to make sure that I that I did everything in my power um, uh, for whatever the opportunity or for whatever the chance may may have been, um, and I think that um, and somehow in, 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 in doing that and wanting to be the best, you, 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 you're not really trying to be the best, you're just trying to be um, not judged. <laughs> you know, you're trying to just, you just, you know, the, a lot of my fashion comes from me being black and trying to uh, dispel the preconceived notions of how someone may look at me, you know, and I'm, presenting myself a certain way just to free you of whatever preconceived notion that you may have about me. Um, and so, um, not, not that I'm trying to be the best, but I'm just trying to get to an equal playing field so that we can just have a conversation, you know? And I feel like with, with faith and with Christianity, I feel like if you carry your life the best way possible, um, you can get to a place where you could have a conversation and someone would be open to listening to what you have to say because your life walked in the door before you walked in the door. You know, nowadays, it seems like influence is such a, um, it's a relevant term. And it's something that I think uh, a lot of people are always trying to strive for and trying to gain in any way. Um, and I think you've got a lot, of, a lot of influence. And I feel like everyone in this room has a certain amount of influence. And you have stewarded your influence so well. What are maybe some, some tips on how to steward the the influence that we acquire or the influence that we've been given by God in life? Man, you just know that it's not yours. You know, like as soon as, soon as you know that the influence on your life is, is not because of you, it's because of who you serve, it makes it a lot easier to deal with it. And you don't have to deal with the weight of it either. You know he's carrying the weight of it. And so I think, um, you know, make sure the intention in chasing influence is to um, shine a light on him and it's not a selfish um, desire. I think when it, when it becomes selfish is when you, when you can kind of start to get strategic and you start to do certain things out of, um, outside of God's character that he has for you. And I think it's just important, you know, one of my friends told me, you know, we're, we're not built for fame. You know, humans aren't built to deal with that. That's why you see a lot of people get famous and it, you know, it, 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 it crushes them. And I think that, you know, we're built to reflect God's light, but we're not built to, like, hold all that light. And so, um, 
uh, again, and, and influence is just uh, a, a, another way to um, to direct someone to Christ. You know, and if you just look at it kind of as that as a tool for that, and if you can direct someone to Christ without that influence, then maybe you don't need influence. You know, maybe don't be so worried about that. You know, let's always. You know, why are we, what is the intention, what is the purpose of whatever it is that we're doing, and let's not get into these, like, worldly s statistical figures that um, are, were not set up by the kingdom or built by the kingdom to try and measure the kingdom, because then it just gets really messy. Yeah. You know, I, I think coming in on the... Uh close to the end here. I wanted to ask, nowadays, there's a lot more critics than there are compliments. And uh, if you get things on YouTube or uh, whatever, it, it becomes you know, a complete show. And you can find yourself being criticized by family or peers and uh, people that you felt like were really close to you. Um, and I feel like one of the biggest things that I've, I've felt as a youth pastor um, in trying to, to lead a small part of the next generation is that teenagers find themselves listening to the critique and to the critics so much that it almost, it hurts them and it crushes them. And it takes, it takes them years to be able to get out from underneath it. You know, stereotypically, just overall, I'm not saying it's every single person, but I, but when I look at it, I'm like, man, this is, with social media nowadays, it is insane. How do you keep your critics from ruining your calling? The block button, just block people. <laughs> it's simple, ain't it? <laughs> just block them, man. And I, you know, I had to figure that out to my, for myself too, because we are human. You know, we're all human, no matter how well or bad we may be performing or what it is that we're doing, and those things affect us. It doesn't matter who it's coming from. You know, there's nothing wrong with someone saying something negative and it, like, affecting you because you're human and you don't want to get to a place where you're used to seeing negative stuff and it doesn't bother you and then you're numb. You don't want to be there. Um, so, you know, for me, I mean, I you know, someone saying something negative or something on my page or whatever it may be, like, I'm blocking them. You know what I mean? Like, and, um, that, that's just what I have to do to kind of protect my, myself. Um, and, um, you know, ag again, as, as, as long as whatever it is that you're promoting and whatever it is that you're sharing across those channels, you know the intention of it um, and you know where it's rooted in, um, you. You, there, there's, a, there's a deeper level of peace um, around you and what you have to say and that when you lay your head at night, um, no matter what anyone is saying about you, um, truth is always truth and truth will always set you free. And so um, I think it kind of gets back to the, you know, understanding the intention of what it is that you're sharing, understanding the intention of what you're doing and, um, you know, don't be afraid to um, keep your circle small and to, um, you know, make sure that you're surrounded by people that are going to lift you up and surrounded by people that are, um, you know, praising the same God that you're praising and iron's going to, you know, help to sharpen iron. You know, it's, in, it's important. You know, you got those people that are trying to pull you down. Make sure you have equal, if not more, people that are, like, lifting you up, you know? So, um um, and, you know, it's just really, impo it's really important that you, you pick those people close to you and then you identify the people that you just got to kind of love from afar and be an example to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jerry, we appreciate uh, the time that you would come out and uh, give to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Your family, man, your family. Come on, let's give it up for Jerry Lorenzo. Come on, if we could have everyone stand up to their feet.
we're going to go into another time of worship. And uh, we're very intentional with why we brought out Jerry. I think it's, I think it's really cool to be able to see you know, all these campuses that are coming tonight, EFAM across the world, tuning in for Rhythm Night. And, uh, you know, every single person in this room has a story. You know that? Every single person in this room has a story. Look at your neighbor and say, you have a story. All right, they were mean. Look at your other neighbor and say, you got a story. And you know what? That's what tonight is all about. Tonight, we want you to share your story. It says that by the word of your testimony, by the word of your testimony, by the word of your story, you can overcome absolutely anything that comes your way. And even someone who is a little older, who is designing clothes that I think we all enjoy, who has an amount of influence that's wild, who is in circles of people that you maybe scroll through and see what they're doing and look at and maybe aspire to be. Maybe you've been inspired by what he does as a profession, but I want to let you know, I love the part when he says it don't matter how much influence you have. If you can affect someone with your story, if you can share the gospel, if you can share the faith with your circle of influence, that is all that matters. That's keeping the main thing the main thing. And so tonight, I want you to be thinking about it. What does my story look like? God, what is my story? Maybe you haven't even thought about that. Like, what's my story? Because I think some of you are thinking, man, my story is I, my parents got divorced. I lost a loved one. I want to tell you tonight, I really believe that God wants to give you a different perspective. And he, want to let, he wants to let you know that you are valuable. You are worth it. You have everything that you need. You are doing better than you think you are. And if we can understand the power of our testimony, by the word of our testimony, we can overcome everything. And so I want everyone to raise both of their hands as we go into a time of worship. Be thinking about, God, what kind of story are you writing for me right now? What have I been through? What am I going through right now? And what do you have into my future? And I want you to press in. I want you to press in. I want you to all pay attention. I want you to listen to these words. And I want you to press into what God has for you. You might think your story is going the wrong way, but let me tell you something. He's going to turn it for good. Come on. Won't you say he's going to turn it for good? Come on. Say turn it for good. Come on, yeah. Turn it for good. Come on. Let's sing. Hey.
the end of your story. Come on, God's going to take it. He's going to turn it for good. So we're going to declare this tonight. Come on. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you. You turn it. You turn it. victory doesn't come from us, that the victory comes from knowing that you're with us, that you never leave us or forsake us, and right here, right now in this moment, we acknowledge your presence, have your way Jesus.
as we sing.
Thank you for watching my video. Thank my you for watching my so video. Good. My video was better. Thank That's you. So good. We just believe. We in believe. You. I believe more we than believe he does, you. but I believe in you. Thank you for watching. You so much. Make sure you comment. comment. I encourage you. No, comment. comment. Comment to me first. Comment. Then comment like, to him. What's up, Evan? No, comment. What's up, Big J? It's your boy.